For tens of thousands of years, humans have turned to the Earth to provide what we need. And in that process, we've discovered some incredibly useful skills, like pottery. The earth beneath our feet was once the preferred building method for our homes. And now, a global climate crisis and some new technology are giving this age-old process a new life. My name is Tony Johnson. I run a company called Earth House Holdings and we build high performance rammed earth and we sometimes teach and we sometimes construct and that's our mission is to get it out there because we believe it creates a really comfortable living space and has a better solution than just building with wood. I was living in Margaret River, Western Australia and every day driving to the surf past a really beautiful Episcopalian church that apparently the community got together and, and built. And uh, that sparked my interest for sure. So came home and uh, having a background in concrete, I learned some more and built this house, worked on a couple other projects. Yeah, it's become a viable business. A rammed earth traditionally was kind of a low cost way to create a structure and I, there's a pretty high percentage of the Earth's population that still lives in earthen structures. You can just dig it up out of the ground traditionally and put it in a form and ram it. But we have a little more constraint here having a seismic risk. So we build high strength, high performance rammed earth so it's thermally broken. It's a bit like sandstone. It is sedimentary in nature. So, you know, you might hear of the Great Wall of China, a bunch of that is rammed earth. Uh, a lot of the old structures in the foothills of the Pyrenees are rammed earth, partly due to the thermal mass and, you know, some places got lucky and they had the right type of clay in the soil as the binder. Historically, that's where rammed earth comes from. There's been a bit of a resurgence because it actually happens to be kind of beautiful. Also, it meets the demands of uncertain future with climate as well. Sometimes the inspiration for a project comes from a natural feature that's in the landscape. Here it was in the summer, this is kind of the color of the dirt, so that's where, how we pick the color. You add some oxide pigmentation to the mix to achieve the color tones you want. So. Yeah, I mean, it can blend in. Um, it can really stand out in the snow, too. It looks really pretty when there's snow on the roof and these earthy kind of looking walls standing up through it, right? So it can fit into a urban landscape, a suburban landscape, or a rural landscape really well. We had a lot of wood on the property being on Vancouver Island. The beams and the ceiling are all wood from the property that we milled. The only thing it's not is the cabinets and the engineered trusses, so everything else came from the property. It's dug fir, hemlock, cedar. Yeah, just try to keep it fun and natural and, uh, you know, drywall probably being my least favorite of the finishes in here. I think we kept it simple, just, you know, white paint and kind of natural earthy colors. There's a lot of elements, but I think it works together. As the walls go, 90% of them is going to come from your local quarry or gravel pit, which is within 10 kilometers. And we've been all over the world consulting, and, and usually within, you know, maybe maximum 80 kilometers, something like that, there's a, a resource that can build walls that are high strength. That keeps the carbon footprint down and, and adds to the security of the building materials for sure. And we bring it to site and then we mix it with our machinery and add cement as a binder, 9%, sometimes lower, and we compact it and we get concrete-like strengths. The sedimentary effect on the wall is delivering lifts into the form and every line you see is a lift compacted down and then we start on another one. There's no limit to how many you can do because it's kind of a zero slump mixture. 
The rammed earth mixture has about a half to a third the amount of cement content in there and, and I acknowledge that cement has a definite carbon footprint. There's one metric that's not really taken into, into account with uh, you know, saying if something has a high carbon footprint is durability. So if this house outlives three houses, how does that factor into calculating the carbon footprint of the house? Which it likely will. As far as insulation goes, I mean, you, you might be lucky and live in a place like Hawaii or maybe a hot Mediterranean climate where you don't need insulation. But being in the north and pretty much all of our projects, they require insulation to create a thermal barrier so that the heat can't escape the house. Now, these walls are thick. They have rebar and insulation inside, and that all helps when it comes to energy efficiency. In the summer, it helps keep the cool air inside, and it does the opposite in winter with warm air. But perhaps one of the key reasons to consider building with this technique is when it comes to wildfire protection. Because the wall has an exterior wife of rammed earth, you can't burn rammed earth. Like we actually, we were torching the walls to dry them out to get the waterproofing on there. Other than concrete, there's not many other materials that you do that to. So we used metal fascia as well, exterior mineral wool insulation. All these items can't be burned. So yeah, it is a consideration for sure. The fireproof thing is going to become more and more of a topic for sure. There have been studies in Australia who have, they've been dealing with bushfires for years where rammed earth was deemed the best wall system in a wildfire situation. A high performance rammed earth wall will outperform a stud frame wall pretty much on every metric. Wood might be a little more ductile, but that's about it. Everything else, the rammed earth wall is going to outperform it. It's not organic, it won't mold. It has superior levels of insulation. Every stick frame builder is struggling to, or adjusting to get up to the step code practices and adding more insulation to their walls. These, these walls have been like this from the get-go and they perform as well or better owing to the high thermal mass. So you're gonna have a passive way to manage the humidity in the house. Just, it accepts moisture and releases it. For 90% of the people that reach out, to us, that's probably their first driver is how it looks. They're like, oh my God, it's so beautiful. And then maybe 10% are interested in the health benefits, the lack of mold and the um, energy efficiency. But once they're on board, those things become important to the people that originally it was about aesthetics. We have two sides. We can teach people, train people how to do this, and we do that. We've done that in multiple locations and countries. We can also construct a long-term goal to bring it to more people in more locations. There are people, they're pretty stoked to be involved in building something different rather than just doing the normal stick framing and you know building a house that way, right? So. We've got a pretty good team and we're all pretty pumped on what we're doing. So if you have your forever home or your dream home that you want to build, then what other material is going to be fireproof and beautiful and lack maintenance and you know, create a comfortable environment on the inside? There's, there's not many. Sometimes you go down a wormhole, a rabbit hole, and you think about where else could I live? What else could I do? But I don't think I could live in a house and have the same level of satisfaction as I do in this house. Maybe it's because I'm biased and I built the place, but uh, it is comfortable. Yeah. It does everything we need. It's durable. Now, you know what they say, history repeats itself. And usually that has a negative connotation, but it can also be positive too. Now, for decades, the building industry has struggled to meet the demands of housing, and that leads to new technologies. But many of those new technologies have increased the human impact on climate change. But as we see here at Tony's revamped rammed earth house, 
The traditions of the past can be combined with the solid and sustainable solutions of the present to find new ways of building better for the future.